you're already starting to see it. The credibility of Michael Wolf, who I know you have worked with, and I think that you are part owner of the publication that largely employs Michael Wolf, the Hollywood mm -hmm. reporter. People are now attacking his credibility. Does he need to be defended? This is why this is my concern about all of this is that oftentimes and you know I, I would call this the Roy Cohn technique right where you you don't attack the message you attack the uh, the messenger and uh, this is a famous strategy that Roy Cohn used and Trump has used for and it is you know from the time way back when he started using Cohn to now in the administration uh, I think. I can't speak to any of the specific details because I only know the ones from the dinner, which are entirely accurate. I, I have seen before, though, where subjects uh, who say things in the comfort of a conversation with a reporter often regret those things because they take on a life of their own when they're in print. But, I'm not, I, but I'm sure you know Michael Wolf well. Yes, I, mean, I, I know Michael incredibly well. well. And we've I, had him on this show many times, and we appreciate him coming on. And, of course, Michael, if you're yes. out there watching, is it open? Invitation. Here's, I guess, forget about the details of the book for a moment. I guess mm -hmm. the, the biggest discrepancy is that, you know, Michael Wolf says he was basically hanging out at the White House for, for a, a couple weeks or even more than a month. Yeah. The White House is like, yeah, no, not really. He it, was it, here, but he had no access. We've talked to people internally, even off the record at the White House, who right. said they saw him there many times. Why would the White House come out and say this? <laughs> Uh, well, isn't this a, a repeated pattern of the White House? You say blue, they say red. I think that I think that it's there's a you know there's a truth vacuum that goes on where the, the you know, from the day one with the size of the inauguration, uh, the, the crowd at the inauguration, that there has been a, a persistent drumbeat of disputing facts, and uh, I, obviously it's embarrassing that this book came out, and I think. It's also embarrassing that, you know, my God, what is the press apparatus around the White House where, where a reporter, and if you do a simple search on Michael Wolf on Google, you might say, oh, maybe this isn't the guy who should go around without a chaperone in the White House. Uh, I, I don't, I really, can, I can tell you, Michael Wolf was not pulling off an elaborate hoax for the past year. He was seen there. I spoke to him multiple times over the year uh, when he was in the, in the West Wing. Uh, I asked him repeatedly what people thought he was doing. Doing there, and he and he was, you know, he sort of gave that Michael Wolf laugh, and he said, you know what, I don't know, but I'm I'm continuing to take notes, and he said it's going to be incredible. And from you know, from the very first time I talked to him, this might have been two weeks into his time at the White House, um, I said to him, so how's it going? And he said, oh my God, it, this is this is crazier than I ever would have thought. And obviously, he's a good reporter. He kept those feelings to himself. And as he described it to me, it was a culture of, it was a culture of, you know, Me Too, not in the current Me Too movement, but a culture of Me Too, where uh, people saw people talking to him, and then all of a sudden, everyone else wanted to talk to him or felt they should talk to him. And some of it was people, uh, the, the different people in the West Wing feeling like they needed to defend their turf. Everyone grew increasingly paranoid of, about, about Steve Bannon and what, and what Steve Bannon <laughs> was saying to Michael. And this had this sort of spiraling effect where mm -hmm. uh, by, by the end of the year, Michael had access to everybody. So, Janice, um, our apologies to anybody who's watching your interview with Morning Joe this morning. I'm sure yeah. many people, though, had, were not. And so I'm, I am interested in what right. happened with that dinner. It was a five-hour dinner. You sat yes. between two very fascinating people. And how did, yes. it, how did it compare to what was in the book? You, I, you say it's 100 percent accurate. Yes. The, the details that Michael has in his book are, as I remember them from the dinner, and I think what Mike, the, the only surprising thing to me is, how much more Michael could have written from that dinner. Michael could have Michael could do a whole separate book about the five hour dinner with Bannon and Ailes. It was it was unbelievable. And when the dinner was done, Michael and I we, and Michael's partner, Victoria, we sort of looked at each other. We were the only ones afterwards and we're almost in stunned silence you know, at the what, level of stuff. What made that we it learned. so remarkable, Janice, beyond it, it, what has been reported? Yeah, it, it was just sort of the casual rapport of everybody at the table and the, the willingness for Bannon and Ailes to sit there and talk about some of the most newsworthy things that you can imagine in front of in front of Michael Wolf and in front of me. Uh, and just so you know, there was there was an agreement before the dinner that nothing would could be used from that dinner immediately. And after and, and Michael, uh, after the death of Roger Ailes, uh, uh, Roger Ailes's widow Elizabeth gave Michael permission to use information from the dinner. And then Steve Bannon 
took the record, took the dinner from off the record to on the record, thus permitting Michael to use the information. So, but they were they were in a relaxed, you know, at, at a relaxed, you know, no reporting environment at the time, and they laid it all out, like what they were going to do for the next three months, who was going to be in the cabinet. Uh, Roger right. Ailes offered to coach people through their testimony through Congress. To um, It was, I mean, everything. It yeah. was stunning. Fa fa sounds like a fascinating. Uh, I want to be on the invite list next time, Janice. <laughs> right. uh, but, so let, let me let me peel back. I mean, obviously, you yeah. vouch for the accuracy of the account yes. of what of, of the dinner. But there are others who have disputed very directly quotes attributed to them. Right. Uh, Gary Cohn just uh, in a statement to uh, Eamon Javers uh, denies calling the president uh, uh, a dumb. Uh, similarly, Mr. Mnuchin has similarly uh, Tom Barrick, his close friend, has said the same thing. Put me into an editor's chair working yeah. with Michael Wolf on a story where some of the things that are are presented as direct quote, quotes from another person may not have been said directly to Michael <coughs> Wolf, but may have been repeated to Michael Wolf uh, by a third party, Roger Ailes, Steve Bannon, I don't know who his sources were. How do you evaluate those kinds of statements? And say, okay, that's right. Somebody, Gary Cohn, did call the president dumb as whatever. I, you know, I just don't know enough about the specifics of where Michael got certain bits of information, but I do know he the book was legally reviewed, heavily legally reviewed, as you can imagine. Also, though, let's not forget Michael had he almost became a piece of furniture at the White House. So he had he was a fly on the wall, heard things, heard 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 private conversations or conversations where people let their guard down because he was such a familiar fixture. He went in every Tuesday at the White House, signed in and left on Thursday. And uh, you, no one was his minder. Uh, so I, I can't, I don't know if, pe I don't know. I imagine he overheard some things. I imagine there are also things people well, might regret having said. He's become but, a very expensive piece of furniture right now in terms yes, of the anyways. reputations of lots right. of people. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.